Quite possible that if you're a pianist, you'll enjoy the relaxation of playing a bit of Scott Joplin now and then, myself included. I just find his compositions really fun to play, and it never seems to get old for me, and I'll probably find the maple leaf rag just as enjoyable to play when I'm an old man. For me, Joplin was always a nice relaxing departure from the complexities of practicing Chopin or Beethoven. So being the person I am, I decided to do a bit of research on him, as I found his music completely revolutionary for its time. It still astounds me that a piece like The Maple Leaf Rag was written in 1899, since for me it represents the beginnings of jazz in a lot of ways. But I'll save an analysis of Scott Joplin as a composer for another time. So basically, while I was researching, I came across an opera he wrote entitled Tremonitia. Naturally, I had to listen to it, so I bought the whole opera and listened to it from start to finish. I was astonished by what I heard, and at the same time incredibly perplexed as to why the opera had not become a standard of American opera houses. One track after another, I was treated to fantastically original music and a style that was very distinctly American. And after listening to Tremonitia, I would never view Scott Joplin in the same light again. It has sort of become commonplace in many circles to push Joplin's side or discount his music as being sort of early barroom pop music. But it is with this opera that Scott Joplin left that realm entirely for me, and entered the realm of being an incredibly valuable composer. In fact, this opera changed my opinion of Scott Joplin so much so that I find it insulting to categorize Joplin in such a way. Don't get me wrong, obviously Joplin's music played a role in the popular repertoire of the era. I just think he is a more valuable composer than merely some proto-pop music composer. So why is Tremonitia such an unknown piece? Why isn't this America's magic flute or Rigoletto? The answer is simple. Tremonitia was almost completely forgotten. All Joplin could organize during his life, as far as a performance goes, was a rough run-through in 1915, with only him personally accompanying the singers on piano. As there was no staging, orchestra, or costumes, the performance could hardly be considered as operatic. In fact, the first full-scale performance of Tremonitia wasn't until 1972. And we are lucky to even have a score for Tremonitia, as Scott Joplin wrote another opera in 1903 entitled A Guest of Honor, of which no score survives. Still, the score for Tremonitia was incomplete, as the only published version was a piano and vocal score from 1911 which unfortunately held no information as to how the piece should be orchestrated. This does not mean, however, that Joplin never orchestrated Tremonitia. In fact, he did. However, it is highly unlikely the original orchestration to Tremonitia will ever be discovered. In the ten years after Scott Joplin's widow's death in 1953, his collection of manuscripts were not looked after properly. The executor of Joplin's estate, Wilbur Sweatman, who was also a former associate of Scott Joplin, stored the scores in their entirety until his death in 1961. In the ensuing battle over Sweatman's estate, all of the boxes containing Joplin's manuscripts were lost. The only information pertaining to the whereabouts of Tremonitia's orchestral score comes from a lawyer who worked on the court case surrounding Sweatman's estate. The sister of Sweatman apparently sifted through some of the boxes and told the lawyer to throw the rest away. The lawyer, however, noticed one box with Tremonitia written on it. He looked through the box as he found the word Tremonitia intriguing, and all he says he found were some dirty, water-damaged pieces of manuscript paper, with parts for drums, cornet, violin, and other odds and ends. To him, it seemed like rubbish, and after perusing somewhat, he took the boxes out to the trash. It is important to note, however, Scott Joplin was completely forgotten when this transpired in 1962, so you can't really blame the lawyer. 
It is odd to me that a composer considered so indispensable now to American history was virtually unknown 50 years ago. Scott Joplin only became a household name at the beginning of the 1970s, with new recordings of his work, but his popularity is mostly due to the use of his music in the 1973 hit movie, The Sting. It is also during this time that composers would offer orchestrations of Joplin's Trimonitia, of which the only one I am familiar with is Gunther Schuller's orchestration of the 1975 performance by the Grant Houston Opera. It is a wonderful orchestration and a fantastic listen. The story of Trimonitia revolves around a young and educated African-American woman named Trimonitia, who helps raise her community out of the ignorance of superstition. What sets this opera musically apart, even though thematically it's already very different than European operas, is its melding of European and African-American music styles. Mixed between arias influenced by the highbrow European operas of the era are astounding passages inspired by African-American folk music, spirituals, and ragtime. Trimonitia goes far beyond ragtime, and I feel it shows Joplin's chops as a more profound composer, other than being just the king of ragtime, as they called him. The more or less operatic curiosity of a strong female lead, and the moral message of advancing the prospects of the African-American community through education, make this opera just as pertinent now as it was in 1911. Even if this opera experienced some attention in the 1970s, it remains an opera that is hardly ever performed. I think it's about time Tremonitia got some more attention, and it's the only larger work of Joplin's to survive, and we should cherish it. During the time that Scott Joplin was struggling to get a performance of Tremonitia, he wrote a symphony, a piano concerto, and a musical entitled If. But the manuscripts to these pieces are all lost, and I think it's an unbelievable tragedy that we'll never know how a Scott Joplin piano concerto or symphony would have sounded, but at the very least, we have Tremonitia. Tremonitia 